What are you listening to? Oh, it's the uh, the old radio trailer for the next film on the show. We might actually have some futuristic space vampires on the way. No way. Not more aliens. Yes way. Well, maybe. Listen. We should probably get ready. Take uh, one of those, and uh, one of those, and uh, one of those, and a couple of those. You know, I better just take them all. Hello there, boys and ghouls. Welcome to another episode of Damien's Shredfuls. As always, I am your ever-so-charming host, Lord Damien McDonovan. And uh, with me, as usual, is my trusty first mate, Pickpocket Pete. Say, uh, never mind. You've got us preparing for tonight's presentation. Based on the original radio advert, this promises to be another science fiction blunder set in the far-flung future. Only this time, it involves vampires. Yes, tonight's film is Atom Age Vampire, about a mad scientist using dangerous medical breakthroughs to help restore the beauty of a woman in a terrible accident. But based on the title and sound effects that we've heard so far, I have a feeling we may encounter something out of this world. Hence, Pete and I are taking a page out of last week's film script and gathering any cheap laser-looking guns we might have lying around to fight off any threat we encounter. I've never dealt with vampires from space myself, so we need to be prepared. Tonight's movie comes to us from Italy and producer Elio Iopolito Melino, although you wouldn't know from the credits. For this film he used the pseudonym Mario Fava, a name which bears such a resemblance to another classic Italian director that many reference books actually credit Mario Bava as this movie's producer. Come to think of it, Mario Bava was the cinematographer for a film called Planet of the Vampires. I wonder if there is any connection here. Anyway, Atom Age Vampire was directed by Anton Giulio Meano, who also served as a screenwriter, along with Alberto Bevilacqua and Gino De Santis, though the story is by Piero Monviso. It stars Alberto Lupo, Suzanne Lorette, and Sergio Fantoni. Um, Captain, you might want to take it easy with all these Italian names. You might slip into some Latin and conjure some hellish fiend. <laughs> Well, I appreciate your concern, good fellow, but uh, I'm pretty sure the only thing that we are going to be summoning tonight is a bad movie. And it's actually funny that you mention that, because the original Italian title of tonight's film is Sadoc, l'era de de Satana, or Sadoc, the heir of Satan. Oh. Well, that doesn't really bode well for the science fiction theme, does it? Well, the, uh, the movie is long enough that we don't have to worry about any kind of filler, so let's just get right to it. Produced by Lions Films Productions and distributed by Film Selezione, here on Damien's Dreadfuls is 1960's Atom Age Vampire. All right, Pete. Let's go! Oh, I thought for sure you were going to say, Look and load! The night is still young!
it won't be a minute. Try to get it through your head, Jeanette. I only came in to tell you goodbye. Goodbye? Pierre! It's all over. You had your choice? Either me or the so-called profession you're working at. You're still working, so that means I'm through. Oh, please don't treat me like this. You know your ship is about to sail. It's better for us. It's easier if I go away. Easier to what? To suffer even more than we both have already? You know we belong to each other, Pierre. Oh, please, Jeanette. Let's end us now. No. Pierre! You better move on. There's a mother people out there. They want you to do another number. I won't do another number. I'm fed up with this job. eyes of Professor Moray, there isn't a bit of hope for me, mutilated, disfigured, forever. You might as well be prepared for the worst, but it won't make any difference to someone who really loves you. I don't want to be pitied by anyone, especially by him. Don't leave me alone. At least drink a cup of tea. Leave me alone! <laughs> She has no family here, not even friends close enough to worry about her. The newspapers made that clear. Go to her. Does anyone know you in that clinic? No one. And no one must know that Jeanette Morineau is coming here. No one will know. I have complete faith in you as always. And I know that I shall succeed. You're going to need me. I'll be here, Albert. Don't ask me questions. There isn't time. I'm an assistant to a great scientist who has come to hear of your case and wants to know more about you. He wants to give you treatment. What's the use of treatment? What's the use? You have to believe me. We have discovered a new therapy together, and it's miraculous. I guarantee it. Hello, Leroy. Hi. Now, don't tell me you're here because you want to interview me. You don't think so? Oh, ah, well, then I won't tell you that. Did you read about that girl? Who do you mean? Ah, oh, come on. What about this for a big headline? Jeanette Morineau, happy and beautiful as ever. Think of the mad publicity for your clinic here. Sure, but that's one headline you are never going to see in print. Why not? Doctor, we're waiting for your At round. At your service. So long, Leroy. See so you on. Long. No secrecy is necessary. And I mean absolutely. 
Not a word to a soul. This is the only hope you have. Keep that in mind, always. You will drop out of sight for a short time. Three or four weeks at the very most. And when you reappear, everything will be as it was before. As if you had awakened from a horrible dream. Don't you believe me? Well, then do just as you wish. I have never been to see you. But we'll be expecting you. Now, don't disappoint me. I am not being immodest when I speak of a whole new era in the field of biology and therapy. The destructive and degenerative effect of atomic explosions have driven scientists more than ever before into research involving methods and processes of regeneration, rebuilding abnormal or totally destroyed cells. It is completely successful in correcting abnormal cell growth as well as in restoring cells which have been destroyed. Just as good often grows out of evil, Derma-28 has grown out of Derma-25, the serum which provoked an accelerated abnormal development of cells. When I finally succeeded in stabilizing its effects, I produced the anti-cancer vaccine, which for years had been the major goal of the most important scientific research. Repeated experiments using Derma-28 on specimens deformed by injections of Derma-25 prove its miraculous efficiency beyond a doubt. A single injection of Derma-28... Monique, what are you doing? Don't you realize... Why, oh, you must be completely insane. Yes, it's the Derma-25 serum that we've been injecting in so many of those poor little animals. Transforming them into monsters. You're aware of its effects. Look at that. Come on. You'll have to be exposed to treatment at once in the radiation chamber. No, give me an injection of Derma-28. But you know it's never been tried on human beings. I wouldn't have the courage. That's just why I did it, to force you to have the courage. No, let's wait for the girl, Jeanette Moreno. No, I want to share this honor with you. I've never been as near to you before as I am at this moment. And you will always remember it. We don't need you. Sasha, don't be troubled about me. When it's all over, you can bring me some roses. Leave us now. Quickly, every second we have is precious. Every drop of Derma-28 represents months of work and anxiety. And when the day comes when we can prepare it as rapidly as we do Derma-25... Give then me we... your arm. Yes, there is no doubt. There is not the slightest doubt any longer. You see, it removes every trace of degeneration of cell structure. This is the day that comes but once in a lifetime. That is our lifetime. That's right. I shall always remember everything you've done for me. Thank you. Tell me that in some other way. Tell it to Monique, not your assistant. We'll celebrate this evening. No. Let's both stay home. Together. With our records. One moment. Why do you look at me that way? For a moment there, you seemed to be performing some sacred ritual. Yes, it was a ritual. Come. So you've come to us. I'm happy to see you. And your luggage? In the check room at the station, as you instructed. Where's the ticket? Here it is.
Are you sure that no one knows you've come here? Positive. Go and pick up her luggage. Let's go into the study. Professor Levin will join us in a moment. But this isn't like a clinic. No, it's not a clinic. It's the place where Dr. Levin studies and does his work with me to help him. Come now. Show me your face. Show me your face, I say. There's no doubt of it. Yes. She's disfigured forever. As if by a cancer that's beyond control, like leprosy. There's no one who can help me now. No one. Let me go away, please. I give you my word that I will restore your faith. Restore all your beauty. You're worse than all the others. Because you want to deceive me. <laughs> Don't talk like that. Now pull yourself together. We have succeeded in discovering a great secret. The secret of spontaneous reproduction of living cells. It's the secret of life itself. The secret of life and also of death. Just now I deliberately spoke of cancer, of cells which proliferate unexpectedly at the expense of the organism until they have destroyed it. Well, with this remarkable discovery, we have succeeded in creating spontaneous reproduction of cells. We can rebuild cells which have been destroyed. We have tamed the monster which once devoured us and made it serve our own end. You must be now. It's a miracle. And you will be the first person in the world to benefit from it. I shall perform this miracle. I've never believed in miracles. I've even forgotten how to pray. Oh, please let me go now. Rather than go on, I'd prefer... <laughs> You'd prefer to kill yourself. <laughs> if you've given up all hope, why didn't you do it before this? You're condemned for the rest of your life. And you know it. She knows. They all told you that. All right. Let me kill myself. Right now. If you really are so desperate, take your own life if you want to. Yes. I'll give this back to you. But only on that day when you look me in the face and tell me that I failed you. Do you understand, Jeanette? But until that day comes... Will you try? No, no, I beg of you. She fainted. I've had a room prepared. Oh, I'll bear. And now we must take her upstairs. She's a beautiful human specimen. Beautiful? Didn't you hear about it? No, I didn't hear anything about the accident. I was at sea. We had just sailed. But... You mean today she had all her belongings collected from the hotel tour and had them delivered here at the clinic? It's all beyond me. She told us she was going back to that apartment hotel where she lived. The same hotel tour. Jeanette must still be in town. Oh, it might mean that she's gone away. There can only be one explanation. As a nurse, I'll have to betray a secret. Janet Moreno didn't want you to see her again as she is. Pasha! Pasha! You let the generator go out?
Right away. What a pride it's done to Jeanette. First, the derma must be applied through an incision. Scalpel. Swab. Injection. Nothing. Still no result. Oh, what a bench. Good night, Arlette. Good night. Yeah, let's go home. I'm tired. So long. Jim, you're still here? Uh-huh. I'll help you home. Is it too late? Yeah, it's much too late. Uh, Let me uh, give you a lift in my car. Bloody hell. So, um, no space. I know, Pete. No super advanced sci-fi tech. I know, Pete. Are there even any vampires? I don't know, Pete. L look, I, I, I've never seen this before. I'm just as in the dark as you are. I picked it based on the super sci-fi sounding preview. Well, I suppose we don't need these today. <laughs> Uh, I should have known something was off when we found out the original Italian title. Well, what is the Atom Age anyway? Good question, Pete. Let's find out. Um, here we go. The Atom Age 
also known as the Atomic Era, is the period of history following the detonation of the first nuclear weapon, the Gadget, at the Trinity Test in New Mexico on the 16th of July 1945 during World War II. Great, we have Oppenheimer to thank for this mix-up. Let's see, yada yada yada... Uh, the phrase gained popularity as a feeling of nuclear optimism emerged in the 1950s, in which it was believed that all power generators in the future would be atomic in nature. Of course, the Atom Age is like a real-world or fictitious cultural style or era of history based on the art and tech advances at the time, like the Renaissance or the Golden Age of Piracy, or steampunk. Or cyberpunk. 2077. Uh, yeah, just with fewer but far more devastating bugs and no downloadable content. Wait, shouldn't you have known that? I mean, the rest of the crew and I were suspended in time for a while, but didn't you live through uh, Yes, of Pete, I did. With occasional long naps in between. But after 300 years, some stuff is eventually going to blend together, okay? Well, I'm sorry, creeps. This isn't turning out to be at all what I thought it was. But we're 20 minutes into it already, so we might as well keep going. Just, uh, just get on with it and let's see where this goes. Not a drop of the serum left. Five injections without any effect at all. And I know I was not mistaken. They took effect on you. Because then you applied it immediately. In the case of cells that are destroyed, you will have to make continuous applications. Yes, perhaps you're correct. But it will take months to prepare serum enough. Let's send her away. We'll find another subject when we've a new supply of Dermot 28. And let her go around telling everyone what we did to her? We'll have to kill her. And besides, what if the Dermot 28 should have some unusual effect on her? Don't forget we derived it from Dermot 25. I can't bear to think of her becoming a... A monster, is that it? You worry too much about her. Albert! Look there! Janet! You shouldn't have been pessimistic. I never had a moment. Bring me something to drink, please. Albert. If you don't mind. Let's drink a toast to our victory. First, take her upstairs. Albert. shock is completely over. There can't be any more doubt of it. We've won. Doesn't it please you? Yes. But right at the moment, all I'm able to feel is sheer exhaustion. It's as if I were afraid. Of what? Will there be after effects now? Will the regeneration of cells continue as it should? I'm sure it will. Have I slept too long? You? Yes, Jeanette. It's Professor Levin, the man who has... Give me your hand.
I owe you more than my life itself. Janet! Get back in bed now. You have suffered great physical shock with all this. You've recovered, yes, but we must wait a bit. We must be certain what the results are. Absolutely sure. Don't doubt it, Jeanette. The miracle has happened to you. And you will remain with us until we are sure that we can proclaim it to the entire world. Another one? Another one. Don't you feel happy? Don't you want to laugh and sing for joy? <laughs> I wonder why she hasn't returned. I suppose she has an experiment she's working on. Anyway, isn't it better like this? We are seldom without Monique. when you first saw that you were cured? What was then gratitude has already become love. You shouldn't believe that. If I loved you, I would surely tell you. I'll tell you. You love me. You weren't able to see clearly inside your heart, and you're still too upset by everything that has happened in your life. But you love me. You must know you love me. I have snatched you away from desperation and from death. It is I who restored your beauty. It is I who need you. I'll never be able to live without you. Albert. No, Jeanette. You are nothing if not mine. You belong to me. Wait a moment. I'd almost forgotten. Excuse me, one moment. Albert, tell me what it is. Nothing. Nothing at all. Something rather urgent, which I've forgotten to tell Monique. Monique! 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 I don't know what's wrong. It's just though my face were on fire. Sit down here a moment. You'll be all right. Monique. I don't understand. Albert. What's wrong with me? I am here, Jeanette. Just relax. You're very tired. Now she will sleep soundly for several hours. Time is pressing. Move her to the laboratory at once. It must be a success. It must be, understand? Don't count any longer on me. Monique! She means more to you now than just an experiment. Monique! I cannot do it without you. Then I'll make a condition. You know what it is. Yes, never see her again. I give you my word, believe me. Sasha, help us carry her to the laboratory.
I've prepared everything, but what's to be done? Ah, if there were only a single drop of it still left. But there isn't any. I refuse to give up now. We'll try radiation. Have you gone mad? Yes, yes, I know it's madness. But I'm willing to take any risk for her. You know very well it's useless. Her scar tissue is forming again, and radioactive treatment is effective only against Derma 25. Janet. She mustn't suffer like this. But there's always surgery and insertion. You're out of your mind. That's it. It's the only possible solution. I'll transplant directly from another human being those glands which produce Derma 28. From another woman, a young one. Out there. You must be insane. You've gone mad over her. I gave you my solemn word. No, I know that I can't trust you. How will you ever accomplish it? By murdering the first woman that passes. And if the actor picks any different, you'll kill another woman and another. But I refuse to be your Money. accomplice. And if they ask for the truth, I'll die like down, do you hear? Money, come back here. Monique! Monique! Listen to me, Monique. Stop it! We've already said enough to each other. She's lying down there alone. It's not possible to save her. What can we do? But I am still here, and so are you. What more do you want of me? Sacrifice myself for her? You're impossible. Yes, it's true. I'm infatuated with her, but it will pass. Pass away. It's not love, really. It's a sentimental complex. It's only a compulsion, if you like. I want to dominate the girl, to possess her creatively. You will have to help me in this also. Help me overcome this infatuation. Struggle along with me, as you always have done before. Can't you manage to convince yourself she will remain like this? Like this? has nothing to do with the two of us. I promise we will send her far away. Far away. I will forget her. We will start all over again and be successful. Please try to be the same intelligent woman you've always been. You know, I would kill a thousand times before I would admit defeat. Please be reasonable. bound together forever. Forever and ever. Police Commissioner Bouchard, Professor Levin, aren't you? Have we met before? No, but your name is so well known. And your photographs, your television interviews. Admit me, Bubay pathologist. Marais, my assistant. I'm sorry we have to disturb you personally this way. You did telephone us, didn't you? I'm all alone here at the moment. Shall we go inside? Good. Chief, I'm out of cigarettes. Do you mind if I... Yes. Can't you go half an hour without smoking? What is it, Sasha? Why did you come in without knocking on my door? Did Professor Levin send you? Oh, I have a splitting headache. Oh, yes. The champagne. Where is Monique? What do you mean, Sasha? What's happened to Monique? No. No, it's not true. I don't believe it. It's not possible. Monique! Monique! Paralysis of the heart. It's quite obvious. Uh-huh. And she showed no symptoms. 
No warning beforehand? Oh, yes. I've kept her under special care for almost two years. I'll make out the certificate at once. Without an autopsy? An autopsy. I've already confirmed the diagnosis given by Dr. Levin. And out of consideration... No, no. If it's usual practice... Inspector, if the decision lies within my jurisdiction, I say no autopsy. Oh, no. If one isn't necessary. Absolutely not. She was from Cherbourg. Monique Rivière. You will find her identity card and papers in her room. She suffered from dizzy spells and palpitations. I should show you something. Ah, here it is. This is her most recent electrocardiogram. I kept it where she wouldn't find it. Better show this thing to our pathologist. For me, it's Chinese. <laughs> you know, Professor, I'd say I know you intimately. Oh, does that amaze you? Well, it doesn't take a long white beard to be a scientist and a famous one. But I know your articles, I've read your interviews, and I saw you on television when you returned from Japan. Oh, by the way, these strange-looking bottles, are they from... Yes, Hiroshima. A process of deformative fusion of bottles, glasses, and ceramics near each other. The people of Hiroshima sell them as souvenirs. Well, anyway, it's a rather shocking sight. And did you remain a long time there? Sit down, please. For eight months at the Japanese Institute for Radiological Research. Oh, how interesting. Please. Uh, thank you. I gave up smoking. Then you've had a close look at those poor creatures. Certainly. And from then on, I've devoted my life to such research. What research exactly? Are you acquainted with the field of genetic mutation? Yes, vaguely speaking. Frogs that after the atomic explosion produce frogs with two heads. Exactly. Suppose that mutations could be made permanent or not, as we please. Imagine, if this were so, what extraordinary developments it could lead to. What you mean is exploit the horror by extracting its advantages. The bad which justifies the good, is that it? More or less, I suppose. During your television interview, you showed some photos that were most interesting. Oh, yes. Yeah. They're in this album. May I? Please do. Mm. Poor wretched people. And the psychological consequences in these victims? That's a most intelligent question. Well, the relationship between body and soul has not yet been established. Mm. A problem we can let go by, I think. Or am I wrong? Well, then, Doctor, I've made out the certificate. Paralysis of the heart. <gasps> What's that? She's dead! Stop! Stop! Let's go to the police! I'm glad to be alive. Thank you for making me so happy. I didn't want you to get the impression that you're a prisoner there, on my account, through necessity of keeping everything a secret. What are you looking at? The water. The water? Yes, I'm sorry. Isn't there any music? Jeanette, you're so distant. Oh, Albert, please don't make me explain. All right. No, no explanation. One suppose that the escape from the zoo would lead to tragedy. But who, if not a wild beast with the most ferocious instinct, could I have killed to hear the poor girl with such savage fury? There is no doubt that the girl How called there? Huh? Park was a victim of the gorilla which escaped. What is it? I feel cold suddenly and my face is burning like the other night. The night, Monique. Don't get excited. We are going back home. I wonder what it is. Put them on now. Your glasses. The 
Annette is upstairs in her room. She won't wake up for several hours. But I want you to watch outside her door and don't move from there till you see me. Put this stuff somewhere else. I must save her at any cost. I'd give my life to save her. There's always one way. Insertion. Transplant the glance of another woman. A young one. What more do you want me to do? Sacrifice myself for her? Yes. Another one like Monique. And if the after effects are the same. Another and another until I save her once and for all. But I don't have the courage. I don't want to kill again. Everyone knows you, your articles, your interviews on television. Yes, I know, I know. But who, if not a wild beast with the most ferocious instincts, could have killed the poor girl with such savage fury? Yes, Terminal 25. Exactly, Terminal 25. It can create a monster. A monster who doesn't fear killing. Who doesn't suffer as it's killed. I'll give you anything you ask. All right. You really gave me a turn. What are we playing? Hide and seek? So the doctor is the monster, all right, and he can allow himself to turn into it to go and commit murder and harvest living glands, 
And then he uses a machine to turn himself normal? So no vampires. No, Pete. No vampires. Just some lame Italian Jekyll and Hyde. All right. I have some questions. First off, does Jeanette really look all that bad? I mean, she's got some scaling on her face and neck, but she's still beautiful. And how many other medical options did she go through to get to this point? I mean, they've been doing skin grafting since ancient Egypt. Okay, and what benefit is there to turning into the monster to go commit the murders if you're just going to use your scalpel to begin with? If he didn't decide he needed living glands, would he even be turning into the monster to go commit murder? It took half the movie to get to this reveal, and this creature still doesn't even have a name. I mean, according to IMDb, Sadok is the name the Japanese dock workers eventually give the Doctor's monster form, but that doesn't mean anything in Japanese either. Pete! Make it make sense! Oh, by Lucifer's beard, this thing is a mess. Uh, I guess I shouldn't be all that surprised with four writers. And between them, no one has done anything super notable after or before this. DeSantis has 40 writing credits with nothing of any significance, and Bevilacqua only has 18, with the most notable being some screenplay for the classic Black Sabbath and the previously mentioned Planet of the Vampires. Likewise, the cast of this film has done a lot of Italian projects, mostly TV, but our crazed doctor and our leading lady would star in a Greek myth film that came out the same year as Atom Age Vampire called Tessio Contro Il Minotauro, or The Minotaur, The Wild Beast of Crete. Otherwise, uh, not much sounds all that familiar. Although the plot of this film is kind of giving me a little bit of deja vu, where have I seen this before? I'm sure it'll come to me. But in the meantime, I think we'll let you go and get back to Atom Age Vampire, here on Damien's Dreadfuls. Are you convinced now? Oh, but... Think calmly. And without this obsession for your looking glass. I know, you're thinking of yesterday. I'm still upset myself. You're afraid the cure will not be permanent. But you're mistaken. Now it's only a question of cell growth. I've already solved this problem. We must allow the cells we've regenerated to achieve lasting stability, nourish them artificially for a time. And especially with a transplant. Transplant? Yes, it must be done. And it must be done more than once. Why are you staring at me? I told you I'm tired and upset. I spent the whole night working in the laboratory so you could wake up as you are. How many more times will you have to treat me? A few. Very few. No one hopes so more than I do. You could never understand what it has cost me to make you well again. And yet, all I would have to do is tell you to make you realize how deeply I love you. Jeanette! No! Leave me alone, Albert. Please go. I must get dressed now. We can see each other later out in the garden. Very well, then. Hello? Yes, Lieutenant Mornay is still on board the Garonne. He's now in Cape Town. I have a communication for him. It's very urgent that I reach him. Could you possibly forward a letter? 
Certainly, by air mail. He has a stopover on the return voyage. Please, don't mention it. Excuse me, Sasha. I haven't any more cigarettes, and you know I only smoke this kind. Please go and buy me some. Uh, while you're at it, would you mail this letter? And get something for yourself. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, please take it. Do take it. You will remember to mail the letter, won't you? Thank you. Dear my darling, nothing has changed between us, at least not for me, and I need you desperately. Pierre, I'm afraid. Thank you, Sasha. You did very well. Yes, yes, I know I can rely on you at any time. This letter of hers. No, 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 I won't say a word. But don't you permit her to be out of your sight when I'm not around, and disconnect the telephone the way I showed you. Sasha, this evening I have to do some work oh, around no, here, no, and I don't want no. to be disturbed at all unless I call you myself. You understand? Oh. Run along. Get on home now. Aren't you afraid you'll meet the gorilla? The gorilla. I'd rather meet him than some men I know. Get the bar set up. All right. Why must you always be late? Huh? I'm all ready to go. Well, look who's here. Yeah. Oh. Arlette. <laughs> it's been ages. How are you? Don't tell me you've been pining for me. Well, I have, if you want to know. Hi, Yvonne. 
Am I wrong, or are you getting fatter? It's becoming, isn't it? <laughs> hey, hey, good yeah. evening. Hey, right. old buddy. A carton hey, of cigarettes if you play me something. Yeah, yeah. But only for me, here. No, Let's huh? get with it, boys. We've got a paying customer. Sit down here. Garon. That's Pierre Morny's ship. And it docked here today. Where's the key to the front gate? Uh, uh, Idiot! Oh, oh. Oh. Hurry, come with me. Hey, lady. Look, that's cool. Come aboard. No, thanks. I'd rather wait down here. told me you'd always be disfigured. Didn't you ever want to see me? It was the truth, dear, the truth, I swear. Didn't you know I looked everywhere for you? Jeanette, where have you been? You can let me know. Where are you staying? What happened to you? Didn't you receive my letter? What letter? Oh, Pierre, take me away. I'm so frightened. Of what? Tell me. Ah! Ah! No doubt about it. And this one showing the scars was given to me at the clinic that sent her way disfigured forever. Yes, yes. The photographs are of the same girl, I agree. But I was referring to the person you met tonight on the waterfront. You don't think that. Oh, perhaps... no, Commissioner. It was she in front of me. But in the dark, with the fog and all. But I know her. I couldn't possibly be mistaken. There's no Jeanette Morino listed with the Bureau of Missing Persons. But she's not a missing person. She's here. I've seen her. She has no relatives in town, even if she'd been kidnapped. Listen, you know, I want to believe you. I remember the auto accident from which Jeanette Morino barely escaped with her life. But this story of a recovery is impossible. Yet she's cured. Perfectly normal. It's her same face. But who would be likely to hide such a miracle as that? Whoever it was who tried to kill me. For what reason? An hour ago, in Rue Dormay, Police Sergeant Brundell recovered a stolen automobile. This is the license number. Hmm. You want to rejuvenate me? How long has it been since I bothered about stolen cars? The same automobile, a short time before, just about the same moment the assault occurred, was stopped for speeding on the Esplanade, where it passes the waterfront by Patrolman Cholin. Inside, as well as the driver, there was an unconscious woman and a doctor taking her to the hospital. You see? Check the hospital. I've already telephoned. There's no record of her. Maybe he was taking her to a private clinic. The name of the doctor. Well, Shalan didn't bother to ask him that under the circumstances. It could have been a doctor who commandeered the first automobile he found. Or a clever criminal who would say anything to avoid identifying either himself or the woman. Jeanette. Perhaps. But there happens to be a real doctor who might give us some information about this miraculous recovery. Will you let me come with you? Yes, but on one condition, however, that... No, I'll tell you in the car. Ah, good. 
Good evening, Professor Levin. Please excuse us if we're... Oh, this is Police Sergeant Durand. Marais, I think you already know. Excuse the interruption if we're disturbing you at this hour, but passing in front of your villa, I thought, why don't I leave it up to you, Professor Levin, to clarify a scientific problem we have? You were so extremely kind to me when we met each other that time before in those unfortunate circumstances. Oh, yes. My poor assistant had passed away. Monique Riviere. You may go, Sasha. Hmm. Sasha. <laughs> He's a strange one. He's my factotum. Cares for the garden more than anything. Mm -hmm. A mute. The soul of fidelity. An expert with flowers. The classic one to suspect in a mystery story, if there were anything to suspect him of. <laughs> may I offer you a drink, Inspector? Yes, yes. Let's be comfortable. We must try to make it easy for Professor Levin to forget that we're policemen. Did you notice these bottles? He got them as a souvenir of Hiroshima. Interesting, aren't they, Duran? <laughs> you don't have to blow smoke under my nose. Excuse me. Here you are. Thank you. If you please. Now then, Inspector. Ah, I'll make it brief. Look here, Professor. Have you been following an A-class foie? All that Tommy Rot about Sadoc, the monster? Not closely. Tommy Rot is the right word for it. Cheap, sensational journalism. Chief? All right, go out and smoke. If you don't mind, that is. But I... I still don't comprehend. The time before, I asked you a question which you were kind enough to say was intelligent. About the psychological reaction of the victims of an atomic explosion. Well then, perhaps my own supposition will be an absurd one. But think of the ships that arrive here from Japan. And this, uh, Sedok. Is it possible that he's one of those... I see. You've been impressed by the recurring factor in these cases of the wound from the throat to the sternum. The obsession of a vindictive-minded man who has been poisoned or disfigured forever by atomic radiation. One might even say, a vampire of the atom age who wants to recover. Exactly. What do you say? The hypothesis is melodramatic, but not to be excluded. You just said the hypothesis is melodramatic, but the fact that you don't exclude it altogether puts me, how shall I say, more at peace with my own conscience. We mustn't let our feet get too far off the ground. Chief, the photographs? Ah, right. Excuse me, I had another purpose in coming here to see you. Look here. Examine these two photos. Do you believe that a woman reduced to such a state as this might recover altogether? What I mean is without any scar, without a trace. I should say not. This state of disfiguration is permanent. Nevertheless, Professor, Let I... Let me do the talking, Duran. Nevertheless, there is someone who swears that he's seen this woman the way she was. That's impossible. And if there did exist a cure, I don't know, a process we never heard Any of. Any man who had discovered one would be a celebrity. Mm -hmm. And I assure you, I'd be the first to envy him. Mm, I imagine so. All right, then. This other photo, which was submitted to me as proof of her actual recovery, must have been taken at some time prior to her accident. It is. The signature was not dated. Ah, right. It wasn't. And besides, even if it had been, it could easily have been faked. Professor, I'm ready to swear that the... Duran. We've been disturbing you long enough. We're most grateful, Professor. I'll accompany you. Marais? Ah, we're leaving. Duran. Professor, you must feel rather lonely here. Such a big house. Don't you have a new assistant? You think it's so simple to find one? And moreover, I'm enjoying a period of repose right now. I merely study for relaxation. You know, Professor, what I envy you is your gardener, Sasha. Really? A bit difficult to believe that. No, it's just that I'm a flower gardener on my days off. Imagine, Inspector, he even works at night. Maybe he's expecting a frost. I know what you mean. You're dying to have a look inside that greenhouse. But I don't think at this hour... No, 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 indeed. Sasha would be delighted to have you look in. I'll wait for you in the car. What for? Why don't you come too, Duran? This way. 
This is Sasha's kingdom. There are his plants, there are his roses. Sasha, you're honored. These gentlemen have come to admire your beautiful greenhouse. It's really beautiful, too. Well, you ought to know. Flowers, nothing else of any interest. And Sasha is always busy with them. He doesn't even have time to read mystery stories. Yes, and no wonder. Well, good night, Professor. And excuse us again. Sasha, accompany the gentleman to the gate. You're on. Aren't you coming? Good night, Professor. Good night, sir. What is the purpose of this autopsy? Now, Doctor, I've already arranged for the body to be exhumed, and I must ask you to proceed without any further argument. Very well, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Garage, I want my car at the door in ten minutes. Good morning, Doctor. Hmm. You want a cigarette, Chief? Listen, Marie, I've just had an idea. I want you to keep that villa, Professor Levins, under observation. Why? Do you yes. think that... Well... Hi, Chief. You want a good lesson, huh? Hmm. Hmm. Oh, uh, <clears throat> hello there, creeps. How are you enjoying the film so far? I'm still trying to figure out where I know this plot from. It sounds so familiar. I could swear I've seen this before, just without the man into monster scenario. The monster? What? Monster. Man and monster into one. You, isn't that what you'd call it? No, Pete, I would just call it a monster. But you might actually be onto something there. The Manster is actually a 1959 film that first appeared as part of a double billing with the movie Eyes Without a Face. And Eyes Without a Face is about a doctor killing young women to try to find a face transplant for his daughter who was disfigured in a car accident. And it was released in January of 1960, at least a full seven months before this came out. Six degrees of Kevin Bacon. What? You know, that game where you run through movie references until you find a link to esteemed actor, musician, Kevin Bacon. The way you were linking stuff together just made me think of it. Seemed appropriate. Just go put these away. Oi, oi, Kevin! And you lot, just get back to and finish off the movie. What are you shouting for? What's wrong with you? No, let go of me. I want to get out of here. I'm afraid. Of me? Of the man to whom you owe everything and who loves you? You're not telling the truth. You want to go back to Pierre. But I'm going to save you now in spite of yourself. Yes, I want to go to Pierre. I don't care if I'm scarred for life because I know now that he will love me anyway. You think so? Well, your scars are already returning. <gasps> Embryonic still and all but invisible. <gasps> But if this action is not arrested almost immediately, you will turn into just what you were before. <laughs> yes, the thing will get worse. It will devour you bit by bit. It will transform you into an animal like a monster under the very eyes of your Pierre. I don't want to stay here anymore. I don't want to. <laughs> Listen. I give you my word of honor. It will only take a few days, perhaps only one day, to make the final application. And then you'll be cured forever. Free to go where you please and with whom you please. If you're ungrateful enough to leave me for a man who has done nothing for you, you deserve nothing else. But until you're cured, don't try anymore to run away. 
Don't try to see anyone. Will you promise this? Look here. I'll even give this back to you. You have no more reason to kill yourself. What is it? Who? The police. The inspector? Pierre! Who is here? Who is here? Pierre. <gasps> Sasha! Let her go. Yes. Run to him. Let him see you like this. Go away with him as you are. <gasps> Remember, I gave you my word and I shall keep it. It will be your decision then. In the meantime, you will help me to finish it. It is not Albert who is speaking now, but Professor Levin. I have to win, you see. This is all I'm asking of you. You wanted to see me, Sergeant? I'm sorry to disturb you. Why be sorry at all? Disturbances are part of your profession. I'm not really a policeman. Oh, no? Then please explain why you dared pass yourself off as a policeman and for what reason the commissioner... It was my fault. I was so anxious to learn more about your research that I asked permission to come with him. But on the other hand, coming here so late at night and not having time to explain... Sit down. What should you have said? That you had a personal interest in the case of that unfortunate young lady. What is her name again? Ah, yes. Jeanette Morineau. You know, you were not very convincing as a policeman. <laughs> yes, I guess I wasn't. You're right, Professor. It's true. The photo of Jeanette with the signature was really taken before the accident. <sighs> but I know I've seen her. I know it was she. She, Jeanette. Yesterday, in front of me. Beautiful as before. Where my ship is tied up. I talked with her just as I'm talking with you. And if they hadn't attacked me right then? You were attacked? Yes, and from behind. Because I know there's some mystery concerning Jeanette, and I was about to learn it. You love her, that is evident. I wonder if you had parted with her sentimentally, I mean, before you were actually separated. How did you know that? I'm also a psychiatrist. Don't forget it. You are now suffering from an obsession to find her again. You're capable of seeing her and every woman you run into. And perhaps yesterday on that very same pier where often before Jeanette was waiting after a long voyage... No, it was no hallucination. And how can you explain the attack on me? Well, maybe an attempted robbery. Yes, it wouldn't be the first time on the waterfront. See? And perhaps the night was foggy. Perhaps you'd also been drinking a bit. No, I wasn't drinking. It was she, all right. Will you please tell me what you wanted me to do for you? Please help me to convince the police. Tell them that this miraculous recovery is possible. They'll go on looking for her. And for a woman, not a phantom. That's to be excluded. Then you advise me to give up every hope? In your position, I would say yes. No. I love her too much for that. When I find her, as long as I find her, and if you could find her, an entirely different woman, yes, a woman who is no longer yours, doesn't love you anymore. This is what I'm excluding. I see there's absolutely nothing I can do for you. I'm very sorry. Thank you, Professor. No, no, there's no need to thank me. Why should you, Sasha? Accompany the gentleman. I hope I see you again, sir. Goodbye, Mr... No, why bother to give me your name? I don't think there'll be any further occasion to see each other.
You could hear his voice. All you had to do was open the door, and you didn't do it. I didn't do it because... You didn't do it. I was sure that I could rely on you. Now wait for me here. If I leave you alone, it's because I have to do still once more what no other man ever did for the woman he loved. Tomorrow there'll be nothing here. Oh, if I could only tell you the truth. What do you mean, the truth? You must wait for me. I'll be back in a couple of hours. Follow us. Step on it. Very good. In his automobile. Have you arranged for reinforcements? Take all precautions. Exactly where is he at the moment? Let's take a seat. Is this seat occupied? No, indeed. Now, Buster, let's not start on your bed, huh? May I have a light, please? Thank you. But is the woman dead? Hmm, that's a blessing. Yes. Yes, naturally. A little arm throughout the zone and declare an emergency. Professor Levin? He sat through the whole film and then he went out. Gerard's telling him. We're waiting here for further instructions. I told you, Chief. We are both inside the whole well, time. Well, we both took turns. He didn't move one. Not one. Let's go in. Leroy. Well, what are you up to? I'll come clean with you now, Chief. If you won't let me chase set up, then I'll chase you. As you can see, it's your fault. Well, from now on, you mind your own business, get me? That's your orders, Chief.
Where was he sitting? He never moved once. Where was he sitting, I asked you? Right here, Inspector, in this row here. This one. He was sitting in this seat. And you never let him out of your sight, huh? Well, I slipped outside for a minute to buy some cigarettes. But I never let him out of sight. And who was there sitting next to you? If what I think is true, you'll be back in a beaten uniform. That reminds me, what was he wearing? Yes, what did he have on? I could see that he was wearing a camel's hair coat, Inspector. Yeah, that's like opening a phone book with the name Smith. He sat here, you say? Right here, sir. Where were you two sitting? We were back there. That's right. Inspector, headquarters told me I would probably find you here. The autopsy I did on Monique Riviere. Incredible. I'll never be able to forgive myself. You mean like the others? And this stuff, what do you think it is? It's blood, there's no doubt about that. I don't know if it's human or... And what else do you think it might be? Have it examined right away. The rest of you come with me. immediately. I don't believe you. But you're completely cured and it's forever. It was I who did it just when I began to think that. Come on, get dressed. Don't lose any more time. We must get away from this place as soon as possible. Get away? Yes, at once, I said. No. Have you lost your mind, Jeanette? Those policemen suspect me by this time. The police were here. Don't ask me to explain it to you. I don't want to. Hurry up now. I'll hurry, but I'm not leaving with you. Jeanette. You made me a promise and this is the decision I've made. You, Jeanette. Mind you here. I've even killed for you. I've... I beg you. I've unleashed a horrible force within me that I can no longer control. You alone can help me stop it. Tell me that you will never abandon me now. No! Look again. You begin to understand now. <laughs> Tell me you belong to me, that you will run away with me. It is my only hope of salvation. Again, the man you came to for help and who loves you so much. It all depends on you. No, it's horrible. Janet. Let go of me. Pull the trigger and murder the man who condemned himself for you. Have that much courage at least because in a moment or two you will go mad. Mad with horror you don't know. <laughs> That's right. Don't look at me. It's better that you don't look at me. But believe me when I say you can still save me if you would say to me... No, I can't do it! No. Well, you say no. Well, then get dressed. I'll give you one minute and no more. You're coming with me whether you want to or not. I don't know what will become of us. It doesn't matter anymore. But you'll never see your Pierre again. You are mine. Fine! I kill you first. Now get dressed. <laughs> Albert, have you no pity? Pity? That's what I ask of you. I. No! Let me go! Let me 
Let me go. No one will ever take it. Let me go. Away with me. Go with me. No. 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 Take that man out of here. Well, come on, give me a light.
Alrighty then. That happened. Hello again, creeps. Well, the movie is finally over, and well, that certainly doesn't answer any of my earlier questions. If anything, it only raises more. Like, uh, why does the Doctor return to pure human form after he's dead? I mean, he had to stop medicating himself to turn into the monster, and then go through a special process to return to his human form, yes? So why did dying turn him back? Is the Doctor a werewolf? Was it a full moon? No one was drinking blood or stealing life energy. Where are the bloody vampires? It's no wonder this movie was mostly panned when it came out. When it was released in Italy, a review in La Stampa only gave a brief synopsis of the plot and said that neither the directing nor the actors make it any less absurd or clumsy. Phil Hardy's book Science Fiction calls Atom Age Vampire a routine Italian offering, while Luis Paul called it exploitative yet enjoyably trashy. The review I appreciate the most, however, comes from the monthly film bulletin that referred to the film as a standard, unimaginative treatment of the familiar monster theme, and sluggish, banal, and of interest only to the most determined fan of the genre. Well, that's us, isn't it, Pete? What? What? Never mind. Anything you might be playing on that thing has to be far more interesting than this stinker. Although, that didn't stop someone from trying to produce Remake. No, not a remake, just remake. British artist Adam Roberts created a scene-for-scene -scene reshoot of the movie using the dubbed English soundtrack, but without any actors. It was meant to evoke the quality of a low-budget backyard film from the early days of YouTube or an old SOS VHS. He titled the film simply Remake. Well, uh, I think I'm about to unmake my copy of this film. I didn't get out all of these space-age laser guns and not use them. And as for Remake, I think I know exactly where to send that to. Well, boys and ghouls, I think that we have had just about enough for us tonight. Thank you for joining us on another episode of Damien's Dreadfuls. As always, I have been your ever-so-charming host, Lord Damien McDonovan. And with me, as usual, has been my trusty first mate, Pickpocket Pete. Until next time, have a ghastly evening. Say good night, Pete. Good night, Pete. Ah!